Now, Leonard, this morning, he talked about the original uh, purpose of PDF. So PDF is like uh, digital paper and it's reliable, compact, complete. Uh, you know in advance what it will, will look like if it's printed. Um, but nowadays, PDF is more like a container and it can contain anything. Um, the XML forms architecture, the document is no longer defined using PDF syntax, but it's defined in XML, and this XML consists of different parts. And two of the most important parts are the template, it defines the appearance of the form, so like this is a header and it looks like this, and this header needs to be repeated. And you have the data sets, it's, these contain the, the, the actual data and the description of the data. And if you have a, 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 a PDF using, uh, with, with XFA, with XML forms architecture, um, like a regular PDF, you know in advance it has 23 pages, and uh, if I open it up on this device or on this device, it will always have 23 pages. You know that in advance. With uh, the XML forms uh, architecture, the template and the data sets are merged into the, in the viewer on the fly, so uh, the number of pages depends on how much data do you have in the document. And the portable document format is used as the container of the XML stream and for the backgrounds of the form. So uh, imagine uh, company stationery. So you will, for instance, uh, define a nice background and then the form will be rendered uh, on top of that background. Now we, we, we thought about some pros and contras, PDF versus XFA, and one pro was it's XML based. You can use your own schemas, you can use your own uh, business logic, and it's easy to, to put an XML inside the PDF, get it out. Uh, the document, the data shapes the document, and you can have a variable number of pages. Think of an invoice. Most of the invoices only have one page because you only have like five invoice lines, but then there are, there's a customer who buys 50 items and you d then have 50 uh, invoice lines, so you want the document to adapt to the data. And then there's more functionality. With an acro form, that's the, the uh, type of form you had uh, defined in, in PDF syntax, everything was static, so if you had a field with specific coordinates, a specific rectangle, uh, if you had more data, uh, the data didn't fit, or if you have less data, you, you still had that large rectangle, so it, it was a static. Uh, so, for instance, the parking ticket, uh, I couldn't move around the fields. Um, with uh, XFA, it, you have more features and you have a flexible template logic, so it's easy to create a template and then uh, have the data uh, shape the document. Now, contrast. One of the pros is it's XML based. It's also a, a, a contra, because if you have a document that has 100 pages, it takes a while to render in uh, Adobe Reader. The adoption by viewers, you can open an, XML, uh, an XFA form in Adobe Reader, but if you open it in Preview, Preview will say, I don't recognize it, you don't see the form. And there are not many tools available, and that's also a point where we said, well, why are there not many tools available? Isn't any competitor of ours interested in, in creating like something like Adobe Lifecycle? Is it, does it make sense to, to, to invest time in, in XFA? Um, you, you create, for instance, an XFA form using uh, Adobe Lifecycle Designer. Here I, I'll create a form from a blank form, and I have an XSD describing my, my movies, my XML, and I, I can drag and drop this. When I drag and drop uh, an XSD or a, a, any data source, uh, Adobe Lifecycle Designer will already create a form for me, but there will be, the, here there's, there's like a, a yellow triangle saying, hey, there's some logic you, you need to uh, uh, adapt. For instance, the, a, a movie can have more than one director or be produced in more than one country. I have to define this here, that, that some of these fields are repeatable. So I, I organize them and I make sure the, the yellow triangle is gone. So I, I resolve all the issues. And I have a form that looks like a static form, but in fact the, the form is defined in XML. And when I fill it out, uh, my empty form that is only one page, I fill it out with 120 movies, and I, I end up with a PDF that has 23 pages, for instance. Now, what is possible with iText today, that's 
we take our uh, resources, uh, demo four, uh, movies PDF. So this is uh, the form that was created use, use, using Adobe Lifecycle Designer. You take um, an XML file using all these uh, with all these movies. So this is my movie database in the form of an XML. And we can say, OK, um, demo XFA, fill out. We can say, well, you take a, a PDF reader. That's a, a common iText object. You create a stamper with that PDF reader. So you, you read the, the empty form. And you say, I'm going to create a new document based on that empty form. I get the acro fields because uh, the XFA stream is, is uh, stored under the acro fields entry. And I say, XFA, fill XFA form. And you fill it with XML. And you say, well, that's, that will be new in, in iText 5 to 1. You, uh, in iText 5, you can just fill it out and have a, a, a form that, that is still, uh, can be, still be changed. But now with iText 5 to 1, you will be able to say it has to be read only. Now, if I run this Java application and I go to the results, results, demo 4, I have uh, a movie's filled. And uh, this is still a form. And I can change it. That's typically not what you want. What you may want is to make it read only, like this one. So now I, I can no longer change it. But this is not what I meant when I said we want to create an XFA to PDF uh, converter, because everything inside is still stored as XML. So um, somebody who knows how to change that XML, he can, he can make it, uh, he can undo the read-only state. What we've been working on is fill and flatten. So people were asking us, can we do the same thing like we're doing with Acroforms, where we fill out a form, like the parking ticket application, and then flatten it? Flattening means taking away all interactivity so that you have a plain PDF that, that uh, can't be changed, so uh, that, that, that is static, that we can store and save. Um, well, here, with this example, we first fill out the form, like we did in the previous example, and then we use an XFA flattener, and we feed the filled out form to the XFA flattener, and uh, we will end up with a form that no longer has any XML inside that is a plain uh, PDF. So this goes very quickly. And what we see here now, I have different examples, but uh, this movie is PDF. This is no longer XML. This is plain, ordinary uh, PDF, no XFA, XFA inside. And if you compare it with, with uh, the XFA uh, version, you see that it's, it's a very close match already. Are we ready with this product? No, because I'm going to show you another example. Um, it's, it's one of the test samples that uh, Leonard has given us. So here, for instance, you have a, a purchase order. And you can choose like some, uh, some articles. So you choose, for instance, a fuel injector seal set. And you will see that the, 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 the power of XFA is that you can add items dynamically. And the more items you add, you see stuff going to the next page. And, and so it's really not what you're used to in, in, in traditional PDF. Uh, the form adapts to the data you want to enter. Now, I have also filled out this form using this data. So this is XML with, with like uh, plenty of, of uh, products I, I've, I want to buy. I have a purchase order. And the result is and results is PO PDF filled. So we see that this is a very close match. But as soon as we start looking here, what we didn't support yet is if you look at the original form, it will be an amount in dollars with two decimals. So there's uh, field validation. Uh, we've already done some of these validations, but not everything. So this is an example I showed to, 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 to say we're not ready yet. Um, but how do we work? Well, um, 
we have some customers who are asking for this functionality, and they are giving us their templates, the templates they are working with. And we are implementing the parts of the spec that are necessary for our customers, and then uh, little by little, the functionality is growing. So it's like uh, a customer-funded new product we're uh, writing. And that's also why um, the stuff like XML Worker and uh, the, the, the things I showed with Acroforms, those are still available in the open source uh, version. But uh, XFA Worker, uh, we've decided to create it as a closed source product because uh, it's really work for specialists and uh, we think we, we don't have sufficient it's very hard to build a community around uh, that product, so we're, we're now experimenting with a closed source solution, uh, customer funded. If you want to try this, there's a link demo itechsupport.com slash XFA demo, and you will see something like this. You can upload the PDF, submit data, and then check the result. Uh, there's also a feedback form. If you say, this doesn't look anything like what I expected, you can send a mail automatically, and then we get these forms, and we can ins inspect that form and say, hey, there's something in the spec we overlooked, and we, we can implement it. Mm -hmm.